Hello, this is Luis. Welcome to the HDTV updates from the 58th EASD Annual Meeting. Today we bring you the Day 1 updates of EASD 2022. To date, Jemink presented a session on the effects of five weeks of once daily dapagliflozin treatment on skeletal muscle fat metabolism in type 2 diabetes patients. It was observed that dapagliflozin induces a change in skeletal muscle substrate metabolism, favoring fatty acid oxidation and a decreased glycolytic flux without affecting mitochondrial function or mitochondrial LD interaction. In an intriguing session, Ku revealed that glomerular hyperfiltration was linked to the development of NAFLD and the advancement of fibrosis in relatively healthy young individuals. Glomerular hyperfiltration may be utilized as a clinical surrogate diagnostic for the early detection of NAFLD in people without diabetes, regardless of obesity, insulin resistance, or hypertension. Rossing addressed a session in which the findings of Sustained 6 and Pioneer 6 post hoc analysis indicated that the risk of MACE was higher for individuals with impaired renal function than for those with normal kidney function. Semaglutide consistently reduced MACE risk across all EGFR and UACR subgroups. These data suggest that semaglutide has cardiovascular advantages in people with T2D and high CV risk over a broad range of kidney function and impairment. VLAN demonstrated that dapagliflozin treatment for two weeks in adults with prediabetes enhances 24-hour and nocturnal fat oxidation, has substantial impacts on 24-hour glucose and free fatty acid levels, and has a significant influence on nocturnal beta-hydroxybutyrate levels. Furthermore, dapagliflozin increased ex vivo mitochondrial oxidative capacity in skeletal muscle. These findings indicate that dapagliflozin induces metabolic health benefits in prediabetes patients that may resemble the effects of calorie restriction. Botan demonstrated that fully closed-loop insulin administration improves glucose control without increasing the risk of hypoglycemia in people with T2D in an open-label, single-center randomized crossover experiment. In this case, the medication may constitute a safe and effective approach of achieving the glycemic target. Krasauskate presented data from the Edinburgh Type 2 Diabetes Study which found that the amino acid phenylalanine was linked to incident CKD in people with type 2 diabetes, but it did not enhance an existing risk response prediction model. Kasparova conducted a complex metabolic analysis of subcutaneous and epicardial adipose tissue from heart failure patients treated with an SGLT2 inhibitor to analyze their influence on various fat depots and find possible cardioprotective elements. The study demonstrated that SGLT2 inhibitor treatment elicits distinct metabolic responses in subcutaneous and epicardial adipose tissue, with subcutaneous adipose tissue exhibiting primarily enhanced ketogenesis and epicardial adipose tissue preserving other functions, including potential cardioprotection. This concludes our coverage of the HDTV updates for day one of the EASD 2022. We'll meet again tomorrow. Have a good day.